Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Richard Chaplin and the founder and chief executive of the Managing Partners Forum, and I'm your proud host for today's ceremony. Now, the awards that we are about to celebrate are Management Excellence Awards, and they recognize the vital contribution of management to the business of professional services firms. Now, as you'll hear from many of the winning entries, that contribution was vital during the pandemic, at times verging on existential. Now, in common with all forum events, the awards have an important educational dimension. So I'll be conducting live interviews with a representative from each of the winning firms on the challenges that they faced and how they went about resolving them. And I'm sure you'll be inspired by hearing about their fantastic achievements. As you know, the forum's awards are grouped under three categories, under three themes, sorry, each with multiple categories. And these are the themes, you can see them on the slide. So helping your clients be more productive, enabling your community to flourish and making your business more productive. Now, in addition to announcing winners for each category, we will also be recognizing three best in theme winners at the end of the ceremony. And we're also giving an exceptional achievement award to an individual who has made a significant contribution to our sector. So we're now coming into the business theme. Uh, let's remember what that's all about. And again, I read here, with almost everyone working from home for some of the time, a key challenge for management is how, to is how best to foster productive, healthy and sustainable working practices and sustain in, in doing is about best strategic reimagination. And uh, before the winners announce, please welcome Sally, Sally Ashworth of our sponsors, Harbour Business Review. Um, hopefully you can join us, Sally. Brilliant, you're there, nice to see you. Um, something slightly obscuring your camera at the moment. Awesome, that's more like the real person, I know. In, in the room I know in your office as well, so all good. Um, but anyway, thank you again, welcome Sally. And Thanks. let's run through the finalists for your category. So um, we have Arthur Cox, we have uh, Bills in Sunberg, a US firm, which um, some of you may be familiar with, and we have Shoesmiths. And the big question is, who is going to be the winner? So let's just look at who's second place. Hang on, hang on. Oh, no, so no, we're not quite there. It's all good. Uh, so who is the, in second place, is Bills in Sunberg. And now it's over to you, Sally, now <laughs> to announce the winner. I'm sorry for spoiling the thunder. The winner is Shoesmiths. And fantastic. And I would hopefully, um, Tony Randall, who is the uh, partner and head of client strategy, uh, can join us to... Uh, talk to us a bit more about his particular entry. Congratulations, Tony. That's uh, very good. Strategic, best strategic reimagination. That's a pretty tough challenge to get. And you won two others as well. So everyone's going to think it's a stitch up. And I promise you it isn't because we have three independent sets of judges and they each independently came to the conclusion. And then they suddenly found out, oh gosh, we're all the same firm that we're making for the winners. So there you go. So what I'll do now is I'll come to me. And if I may just ask you a few questions, if I could. Um, the Basically, as I understand it, you were trying to, how to build back better. You had launched um, a service called Shoesmiths 8, Connected Services, and that there were lots of media reports going on that other people had perhaps struggled for investing a lot. So you were actually looking for more for collaborations with third parties to get to market quicker. So talking there about collaboration with third parties wherever possible i mean how did you go about selecting those third parties yeah great question well first of all uh, lovely to be here richard and uh, thank you very much for the award it was it was nice to hear it uh, earlier than it should have been uh, announced <laughs> <laughs> all very good all very good um so in terms of selecting our partners you always have to start um with deciding what problem it is that you're trying to solve because you never start with the technology or the innovation and then try and find a problem to solve you start with the problem and if you do that actually you can put together a specification pretty easily um, and go out into the market and look for it and in fact for example uh, earlier on my colleague simon was talking about the ai brain uh, that we've partnered with a, a great ai platform called thought river uh, and there are other AI platforms out there, but it was Thought River that actually had the platform that was best suited 
uh, to the need we needed to meet. Um, and Simon uh, was explaining how he took two years to train that AI brain uh, to ultimately exceed the uh, abilities, average abilities of a, of a human lawyer. What he didn't tell you, actually, is that the machine overtook Simon rather earlier. <laughs> it's a bit like AlphaGo, isn't it? If you go back to DeepMind and how they managed to beat the the, 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 the Go master of the world, which if you're into Go is virtually impossible. Um, going back to Shoesmith 8 for a minute, which, as you mentioned, are eight connected services, um, are any of them proving more popular than others? And has that possibly shifted since you launched it? Really interesting, actually. So um, the, the, the two that are proving hugely popular are tech related, not surprisingly. So AI contract review and also uh, we have software for the management of matters by in-house legal teams who, of course, don't have to record their time. So typically don't have anything more than an Excel spreadsheet. So not surprisingly, both of those solutions meet very strong needs. Um, but interestingly, um, progression isn't all about, innovation isn't all about tech. Um, and actually one of our most popular uh, products um, it is a financial services compliance product where we have just totally reimagined how to offer that service to clients. Um, and that actually has been our most successful product over the last uh, eight months. We developed it in just uh, four weeks from start to finish because the need was so clear. We had a, a clear way of meeting the need. And the demand has been absolutely fantastic. But it is important to remember that innovation isn't just about tech. It's about thinking about clever no. new ways of delivering. And, and going back to that, I mean, one of the one of the challenges about having a suite of products is that um, some can get, I would say, lost along the journey or possibly some are only relevant to a subset of your clients. And therefore, they don't necessarily want to know about the other set, the other ones in the in the suite. How, how do you actually deal with that promotional challenge? Yeah, it, 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 it's a great question. Our, our reason for launching the suite of products was to meet client needs. And you're absolutely right. In some cases, it's a smaller set of clients that have that need. But we will never take the view that we will withdraw a product simply because it isn't one of the most popular. As long as our products are meeting some of our clients' needs, then they'll always be there. Thanks. And and there's reference, obviously, to Shoesmith 8, but also in your submission, it talks about two more coming through. Um, does that mean you become Shoesmith 10? Uh, uh, and do you see a limit to the number of products that could be incorporated? Uh, well, no, given the investment we've made in trademarks, etc., it certainly won't be changing from 8 uh, <laughs> to 10. <laughs> Basically, we have eight categories of products. And right. all the okay. new products that come along fit within one of those eight categories. I, I understand. And are you setting clear revenue targets for Shoesmith 8? And are no, these being achieved? Uh, absolutely not. In fact, our, our, our main objectives for Shoesmith 8 were meet client needs, uh, spark creativity in our people uh, to have uh, develop new ideas for products, raise profile for innovation. And obviously, this is partly <laughs> achieving that. Sure. And income is incidental from the success of all those other things. But you still have generated revenues, as I understand. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. I mean, the revenue we've yeah. generated has actually uh, far exceeded our expectations. Yeah. Well, you can't ask for more than that. Um, thank you very much. And, um, you know, again, congratulations, Tony. I think you've got a fantastic story there. And uh, a strategic reimagination is, is definitely uh, the right description of where you're coming from. And uh, so long may it continue. Um, and you're also appearing on you in the PM Forum conference in September as well. So chance for people to catch up there with you as well, which is awesome. That really concludes the awards for this year. And I wanted to congratulate all the winners and say better luck next year to everyone else. Thank you all for being here. Uh, hopefully see you next year for the 21st anniversary of these unique awards. Uh, and hopefully, one never quite knows in life, they'll be face to face. So thank you again. Slow.